What is up guys? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make It Loco channel. Uh, today we are working on a 2013 Ford F-150 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Of course, it seems to be all I work on nowadays. Um, and we're doing a full timing job on it. I mean, updated parts. We're changing the exhaust manifolds to the latest parts. He even wants turbos done on this vehicle, brand new turbos. So this guy is getting the works. And whenever you're in this deep and the timing set is removed, you want to upgrade the oil pump. A lot of technicians out there neglect it because it's hard to get to. Think about it. If you're in there doing a timing job, it's probably 150,000 miles or more. You're doing a timing job hoping to get another 150. What are you pushing, 300 at that point? Yeah. So you, you're gonna, the clearances inside the engine are going to get larger and they're going to bleed off more oil as the engine heats up. And you have four phasers up front there that need oil for actuation. So you want to upgrade the oil pump to the new Melling M390 HV oil pump. And this fits the 2011 through 2016 uh, 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. Now this oil pump is a high volume, high pressure design right out of the box. So the spring in here, the relief spring is a high pressure spring, which I do not recommend for a standard daily driver. So in the box, they do include a standard 85 PSI spring. We'll walk you through in the bench how to swap that out of here and how to torque it down. So this pump right here has 20% more volume uh, for these aging engines, and that's very important. Now, the problem with this pump is that it's it's a little hard to get to. The official workshop manual procedure from Ford has you dropping the front axle and the, and the oil pan out just to be able to change this thing out on there. And a lot of technicians will tell you the same thing. But I found a way, I perfected my way of sneaking this oil pump out of there with the oil pan in place, which is a huge time saver, at least a few hours. Uh, we're going to walk you through it up close and personal, real close, so you're not missing any key points of it. And the, the biggest tool you need to bring to this job is patience. Patience. Relax. Put a fan on you to cool off and relax. And you can do it very easily. I'll show you exactly how to do it. Let's get started. Okay, so whenever you're changing the oil pump, obviously, uh, before you do, you must remove all the timing components, chains, uh, guides, uh, the lower crank sprocket, stuff like that. And once you do, you pull everything out like you do for a timing job, uh, what you'll do is you'll expose the oil pump like you see here, and then it's very easy to access everything. Now it looks like it's very easy to get it out of there. There's plenty of room down here to get in there and get to the lower um, pickup bolts and all that stuff. But the problem is this pickup right here is really close to the bottom of the oil pan there and you're technically supposed to pull the oil pan, but there is a way to get it out of there without pulling the pan. So getting the bolts out and back in and all that stuff's really easy, but lining up the pickup to the pump and then pump to the uh, flats on the crankshaft can, it, it can prove to be a, a tedious process, I should say. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here. You may wanna put rags down in the oil pan here in case you drop the bolts. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of these two bolts for the pickup right here. They're both 8 millimeter heads on them, all right? And I'll walk you through this. And then once that's loose and kind of, you know, pried to the side a little bit, we're going to go after one, two, and number three over there that actually bolts the uh, pump to the block. So again, you may want to put some rags down here so you don't lose the bolt. Uh, what's nice is that the bolt and the washer will actually loosen on there and it'll drop into the tool. So what I use on here is a regular gear wrench, flex head, eight millimeter gear wrench, okay? And you get them loose. And they're pretty long-winded, these bolts. I know I'm blocking you, but you get the point. You're gonna get them almost all the way out. And honestly, this is even better than using a ratchet in here. Now, once you get them so far down, Especially if you don't have rags in there. I have to get my hand on them and pull them off the rest of the way. So this, this one's very easy. And the other one over there is just about as easy. Um, that's a little further back. There's still good access to it though. 
I may be blocking you guys though. So same thing. Hardest part is gonna be breaking torque on it. Ugh. Like that. You can see with the flex, we can get up and over here for more swing. Okay. That's good, we're broken three now. And again, they're long with the bolts. It's a little hard getting down in here too. Contorting your body. But at least, you know, working on the inside of the engine, of course, you're obviously not gonna be dealing with any kind of rust issues or anything like that. Everything's all lubricated and protected. So we'll just spin them up by hand. And the reason we pull the bolts and the pickup first is because they can be a little weird to get to. And you don't wanna be trying to turn them up by hand and the whole pump is back and forth, back and forth, because it's loose from the block. You know, so we'll keep it bolted to the block and then we'll come in here and loosen these. This pan's pretty flat and has some ridges in it, you know, so it's not a direct sump down into there. And so if you drop the bolt, it probably won't roll away into the sump. But you can see they're long-winded bolts. So they could take a while. It's a little weird trying to go around the camera too for you guys. But you can tell when it's ready to come out, it starts getting a little wobbly like that. And there we go, there's the other one. Get them off to the side so we don't drop them down in there. Then I'll find my cat claw, okay? And I'll find the edge on here and I'll break it free because there's a, a rubber O-ring on there and you want to break it free from there, it's going to stick a little bit. So you can see we're now broken free, all right? And we can go after these bolts. And for these, let's get regular eight mil. And these bolts are reusable. There we go, you can see everything's loosening up. And again, we'll get these off to the side so we don't drop them in. So rip that there. So now we have a little bit of movement, all right? So now that is key to getting the pump out, all right? Because like I said, the pickup, it's just about hitting the pan already, all right? So we get it down, we can push down with our cat claw on one of the ears here and get it over. I'm going to try to get you in here and focus because, whoa, this thing will not focus at all. And we're back. <laughs> so anyways, so once everything's free, you can see the O-ring right there. It has a, they got a standoff right here on the pickup, so it's not going to drop down the pan uh, just yet. So don't worry about that. Oh, that's disgusting. You got bugs getting in here. Um, so, what we'll do, get that guy out of there. My chance that a bug comes through, it comes in. There he is. Oh, jeez. Stuff you gotta deal with during the summer. Anyways, so you see, it's broken free, and the pump has some movement to it. So the key to this is you use your cat claw, we're gonna push down and away. All right, there's a little pocket over, see it? There's a pocket in the block. Down and away. And it's gonna be tight. Just make sure you got your room here, your wobble going on. And then once it's exposed right here, you can help it over too. Sometimes I like to use the my red trim tool. Down and away. All right? Just like that. Now it's basically far enough away. It's definitely dropped down. The standoff right here has dropped down and out of the pump. 
So we just need to start working the pump back. All right, let's get you. So now we're just gonna use something like this, same thing. And see how it just comes loose like that on both sides. We're gonna get behind the pump a little bit, okay? Because it has pressure right now from the, the pickup. And we're just gonna get behind here and work it off. And I've noticed um, that some of these are, they're tougher than others. And this one's definitely tougher. I haven't really correlated it with the different years yet. Um, but the key here is to pull it away from the block evenly because it has that pressure on it. Just gotta keep it moving like that, you see that? You don't wanna bind it up necessarily. And sometimes, especially over here, I'll use that. I use my hand over here and we'll try to pull it off evenly. Let's see how it's coming now. So on this other side, use my hand, and that's where the ports go through, the wheel ports go through to block. You don't want to mar those up with any kind of tool like this. But over here, there's nothing but cast block behind it. So if you do a little prying on it, um, it's not going to hurt anything. So we're just like wiggling it like that. Okay. See, it's basically free. See, it's not too bad. Woof. Make sure you hold that up like this and get it over your wheel, wheel drain. Okay, so I got that far and away. You know, as long as you're, you've been maintaining your oil, your crankshaft, the nose of your crankshaft here should be nice and smooth. No need to do anything really. I like to wipe up down here from anything that dripped. I'll clean up the, the face of the pickup here. Okay. Looking good. And then over here, here I'll bring you guys over. So over here, you saw where I was prying, there's just a cast right there, see it? Uh, whereas over here, I was using my hand to pull the pump away from the block because that's our machine surface right there for the, uh, the oil pump feed. All right, so going back in, uh, we're gonna, of course, take off the old O-ring. The new milling pump has, a, you know, of course, a new pump, uh, a new O-ring right in the kit, so you just use that. Just get it up your finger like this so you don't lose it and get rid of it. Clean this off real quick. You can see it's not that bad of a job if you just have some patience, you know. And you have you know a method down, a method to, to deal with this how, how tight it is in here. Took a you know a few of these engines to really figure out my method. So we get a new one on there. There's enough oil everywhere in here to lubricate the O-ring. Our crankshaft is in this spot already. We're good there. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna push down and far over as possible so we can get the new pump lined up with the flats. You can probably see them right here. And here, you'll see them on yours. We'll be right here, okay? So now we're ready to put the new pump in there. Okay, so the Melling M390HV high volume oil pump comes just like this, ready to go, right out of the box with the high pressure release spring pre-installed. Now that's the one I recommend only for racing applications. Uh, what you want is the higher volume this pump puts out. You don't need the extra pressure. So in the box, they include a brown spring, which is an 85 PSI release spring, which is stock pressure. So we're essentially gonna turn this pump into a high volume stock pressure pump. And I'll show you how to do that. 
and it also of course includes a new o-ring for your pickup tube so the way you change this spring out on here is actually very easy it does have instructions uh, that come with it with torque specs and all that stuff uh, but i'll show you right here on the bench so you're going to need an eight mil socket like this hex socket or an allen wrench eight mil and you basically just need a brake torque on here right and you start loosening it out now when you start loosening it out this springs under high pressure inside of here so it's going to try to shoot the plug out so just put a little bit of pressure that way as you're loosening it and it'll pop on you be controlled that way so you'll simply take out the blue spring and toss it all right and we're going to pop in the brown spring now just in case your valve falls out for whatever reason the actual valve inside of here and it falls on your bench and you're like well but what direction does it go well this is the direction it goes getting close here we're going to show you so you see in the end here's like a kind of like a, a nipple or a centering uh, port on here well your spring actually centers right onto it and sometimes it even sticks onto it because it's that close that's the one you want to go on to not this side you can see it doesn't even try to center on this side so this side goes in first and this will go on here all right so you put your valve back in there just like that it'll slide all the way in take your spring push it in it'll self-center and then the other hard part is getting this plug onto there and centering it onto here so you know you can do it with um you know a hand ratchet i usually use an impact so basically what you're going to do is you're going to push in and turn at the same time so you can go like this and you're going to get started just like that and make sure it's actually threaded and then you can start going in so i usually use an impact just because it's easier to push and turn at the same time so then you're simply going to tighten it down there's no gasket or anything like that on there to contend with and then the torque spec on here there'll be a card that comes a card that comes in the box with the torque spec but i believe it's like 26 to 32 foot pounds um i honestly you could just take your same 3 8 wrench go like this you're going to put your hand pressure on this side and you're going to tighten it just a little bit and this little standard size 3 8 restricts the amount of leverage you actually have so let's see how close we got so i have an actual torque wrench here and i set all mine to 30 when i do these so we'll set it to 30 and i'm sure we're either at 30 or just past it so we're good to go there so again put some weight over here get it in there see how it tries to lift like that so you put weight over there there we go so we're definitely past the 30 mark on there definitely within the range and that's it you're ready to go and i'll show you later on besides that making sure it's not damaged besides that in the end before you actually put it on to the engine we're going to dump some oil into the intake port here a couple tablespoons and you're ready to go but that's how you change out the spring on here to get it back to stock pressure hopefully i can show you guys how to do this on camera it's a little tight getting in there so got our wheel in there we'll spread it around this kind of helps prime it initially upon startup so it gets that suction going and starts drawing from the pickup all right so once this, the wheel's in there everything's together this is torqued down good to go what we're gonna do i like to always do is i'll check on the back side here make sure there's no dents and dings right here where the feed is for the high pressure going into the block to make sure that over here on the block is actually a good mating surface and there's no bleed off so everything's good and clean we're good now we're gonna have to take the flats inside of here you can see a flat right here okay there's a flat in the other side right here you can see them right there that's a flat you see them and that's a flat those need to uh, line up with the flats on your crankshaft and yours are going to be right here, like I said, because it's the, the crank position is already set uh, when you took it apart for timing. All right, so it'll look the same. See, so kind of kind of eyeball it and align it in here. Okay, it looks like it's right there, you know, whatever. 
and then you start working it onto there. Get it onto there, all right. And you're gonna have to get this pickup out of the way. Okay, so right there, you can see we're kinda on top of the pickup. The little standoff, we have our O-ring on there. We're on the shaft here. Now I need to start working the pump back and aligning it to the, um, the flats on there, making sure it aligns to the flats. There it goes a little bit better. So again, we're gonna try to get this pickup down and out of the way. So we have some movement with the, the pump uh, to get it aligned. You see how I just kind of gave like that? And the pump's a little more wiggly now. And I get it away. And then we're just gonna move it around. There's not much room. We can't swivel it back and forth, back and forth, but we can kind of wiggle it. And I can tell you right now, my flats are not where they should be. See, it's moving a little bit. Get it back on there. It's a big guessing game. It's kind of eyeball it. Okay, so that one, you see how it, it went onto there and we're basically flushed out with this first step in the nose of the crankshaft? That pretty much tells me that we are aligned with those flats. You see the difference before it was not going that far, not cooperating, not cooperating, and now it kind of fell into this, this almost flushed out already. So at this point, again, we're gonna do what we can, get the the, the pickup out of the way okay and okay and then we're going to try to wiggle it on there the same way uh, we took it off so we're going to wiggle it on there the same way we took it off So you can't really see it, uh, but you can see now that first step is showing. And I just wiggle a little bit and push it back, okay? So it looks like we're aligned, okay? Because it's, it's coming nice and easy, uh, but we have pressure from down here, constant pressure on there, all right? So it's gonna be a little bit hard getting it back, but we're not using the pry bars for this. Okay, just gonna take a little bit. And you wanna get, try to get this out of the way. As much as possible. And we can keep working on it. So what I'm doing is I'm manhandling the actual pump, okay, just with my hands. Grab them from here and here, over here, and um, it's a very small amount while I'm pushing back. All right, you can see, hopefully. You can see it's starting to go on. Now again, if we're not aligned with that, that step back there, that flat, it would not go back all the way to where it touches the block back here. So that's how we know if we're on it or not. Okay. It's going back nice and slow, but we're getting a lot of pressure from this side, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work it over and try to get it somewhat underneath here. Get that pickup over here. Like that, see? If we get the pressure off, we can get it to a line. All right, we're showing more and more of the nose on here. Okay, so now we're not so pressurizing the edge here. We're over here. And again, 
wiggle and push it back, okay? Now the one thing I wanna stress here is that I didn't use any pry bars, I didn't use any hammers, you saw it all in live time. We wiggled and pushed back, worked the pickup at a certain point to get it over to relieve the strain, and then we finished pushing it back, okay? Once you do, and you get it that far back, by hand, you are obviously splined with the flats. That's very, very key, okay? Because if the gears are not splined with the crankshaft, they will not spin, they will not create pressure. So, let me show you. Get you down in here, okay? So down here, you can see we're basically lined up. There we go. Uh, with the, the pickup, that'll kind of drop into place. We're gonna start aligning that next. But up top here, you can see how much is revealed on the nose, that step you see right there. And remember, we pushed this all the way back by hand. All right? The other thing is, you can see, you can see, where is it at? Right here, where it touches the block right there. I'll get it in there. You see right there? Right there, how it's against the block. Let me show you. See that's right against the block like that? Yeah, with no, no bolt sucking it back or anything else, it's just sitting right against the block. Right there, right there, and over here where it mates up to the block. That also tells us that it is properly splined with the nose of the crankshaft, all right? So like I said, we're gonna go after the bolts next on the pickup, get it all lined up, uh, and then we can concentrate on the bolts up here. All right, here we go. Let's get it made it up. So we're basically lined up already. You can see we just fall right in. All right. Falls in. We're not forcing anything. But first, we're going to take our bolts that bolted to the block, and we're going to put them in. This is going to help us align it and kind of hold it in place for us. So you want to spin it in by hand, you know, a couple of threads. Make sure you're good to go. You don't want to cross-thread anything. And this kind of gets the pump. It gets the pump in a the in position basically the initial position of the pump there we go now the other thing I, I like to do for alignment purposes is that that guide that goes in the, the driver's side the main chain guide the lower bolt actually goes through uh, the pump so I'll go ahead and I'll put that in there temporarily to align it. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Yeah, over here, this one over here, see it? Again, put it in a couple threads, just temporarily, and it'll help align it. Okay, we're good there, okay. So let's concentrate on the two bolts down here. Everything's good to go. So off to the side, out of the way, so you don't drop anything in the pan, you wanna take a small piece of paper towel, all right? And we're going to wrap it over the head of our bolts for the pickup. And then we're gonna stick that bolt into our wrench. You can see it doesn't drop. So we'll do the outside one here first. Make sure we're on tighten. Make sure you have a good feel for it. Because again, you don't want to cross thread anything. So we're going to suck the entire pickup up into the oil pump with this one bolt. I mean... You can get a power tool in here, uh, but see the whole process is just, it can be frustrating, it's a little tedious, you know, it's time consuming, but it's way better than the alternative of pulling the, uh, the pan to do this and the front axle and everything else. 
So once the bolt's in there, you're not, there's no chance you're gonna drop it anymore. So you can pull your wrench off of it and make sure your piece of paper towels uh, on there, get rid of that. We'll get a new one for the other bolt. A new little piece of paper towel for the other bolt. Okay, and then one back here. It has a pilot tip on it. So you get it kind of in there, a little wiggle. Again, we'll just feel for it. Make sure it's threading in properly. So what we'll do is we'll get both these snug, which will align the, the pickup and everything else to the pump. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and torque down the pump bolts to the block. And then we'll come back and torque these last. And they're all 89 inch pounds. So I'll put the pump, a uh, link to this pump that I use, and the torque specs and everything right down in the video description for you guys. So long bolts. Snug. Got our piece of paper towel. We didn't drop in the pan. We're good there. Again, we'll snug. Just snug, okay. And then with all these bolts in place for the pump. Just snug them up. And over here. And once the three main pump bolts are in, you can take this last one for that lower guide bolt. You can take that out and put it back in the lower guide. All right, then we'll go ahead and we'll torque down the pump bolts to 89 inch pounds. Okay. I know I'm in your way, guys, but this is basically how it goes. Pretty simple process. The hardest part is over. And I'll go back and I'll recheck the bolts on these. The torque. Don't forget your third one over here. Out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. So all of those are torqued down. All three of them were flush against the block. Beautiful. And then we can come back and torque the two lower uh, pickup two bolts. Again, 89 inch pounds. I have a little mini, you know, quarter inch torque wrench. That's perfect for this, but if you don't have something like this that will fit in here, trust me, you can use that little that little eight mil gear wrench that's so small you won't have much leverage and just hand tighten these two nice and even like this. And I like to recheck them because of the uh, O-ring in there in case it's settled. There you have it. I showed you guys in real time um, how to get this on here without pulling the pan. It is possible. It's just way more difficult on the 3.5 Eco uh, in the F-150s and Expeditions, stuff like that. Whereas on the transversely mounted engines, Flex, Taurus, Explorer, etc., cetera, um, it looks just like this, but man, oh man, there's nothing holding this pickup on there, on those vehicles. So once you unbolt it from here, the pickup falls down and away. It's never an issue. And it's all right there in your face, really easy. Um, but I wanted to show you guys how to do it on the F-150s and EcoBoost and, and Expeditions uh, where it's a longitudinally mounted engine. It's a little more difficult, but it's definitely possible. That's all for now. 
I'll see you guys next time.